What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're hard at work on the Rangers and this is part three. So it's been kind of interesting filming the videos basically between him and me. So I kind of decided to edit this video. This is my video of uh, me and Blake going to the junkyard and picking an engine. And the next video you guys are gonna see is of Sean completely like tearing apart his thing, picking up an engine, welding a bunch of stuff. We're just gonna kind of separate them a little bit. Yeah, if you guys uh, are liking this Ranger video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you, uh, you wanna stay up to date. Uh, hit notification bell if you don't wanna miss out on an upload, but uh, there should be a video out probably tomorrow or the next day of Sean, basically a whole Sean episode. But uh, yeah, me and Blake are gonna load up some tools head of the junkyard and uh, see what we can get pulled out. Back at it, junkyard, two days later. See what uh, what is left out here. See if all the good stuff is there. I know the F-150 got set in the yard and I think somebody already yanked the engine out of it, which sucks, but we'll, we'll see. We messed up. So yesterday, I knew this thing was gonna come out here, but I uh, actually had somebody come in to buy the RV. That right there was a 2013 freaking Coyote Blake. We seriously missed out on it. I called them. So they posted it online, like on Facebook. They, they post on Facebook when they put drop stuff in here. Noon, that was right when I got done. Called them at one o'clock. They said somebody was already pulling the motor uh, right here. Let's see. Some F-250, I'm not sure if that's diesel or not. Ooh, Blake. Buddy, look at that, you know what that is? Six yep. So, actually, like are we idiots for like coming out here and getting a five liter when there's literally a freaking six liter right there? That's a freaking six liter, Blake. Hi right, guys, this is the one right here, 97 Explore. This thing is super, super freaking clean all the way around wrecked in the front right here what i'll pull the hood so pull the hood but this thing you might have to pull the thing 156,000 miles on it and uh it is a four-wheel drive it is automatic but this thing is so clean on the inside like the you know the seats are good like you could just tell they, they probably took really good care of it and uh, so i'm assuming this engine is going to be pretty uh how's it doing blake Doing great. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming this engine is gonna be good. I think what I had to do is this one. So this engine should be good. And since it's a 97, it does not have the, the anti-theft stuff like the older ones do. So basically this plug should plug right into our, uh, our Ranger. That ECU should plug right in. And this thing should literally almost be a plug and play swap other than the transmission, which we're gonna go grab the transmission here in a little bit. All right guys, so we've been out here for, it's been about an hour. Blake's doing great. He's really, really, really pumped about what we're doing here right now. So, and I'm underneath the wheel well, got the exhaust off right here. And now the freaking Milwaukee is stuck because I was getting that top tranny bolt right there. Got the 16 wobble on it with the Milwaukee. I'm trying to get it out. Should have just pulled the whole tranny, but the tranny is like hooked up to these freaking like Allen head bolts. But we're doing great, Blake. Doing great. All right, if y'all are ever at the junkyard, make sure to bring some extensions, because check this out. We got that. We got the long extension going over the transmission bell housing. And you just hit this thing. And that's how, that's how she came off. Ooh. Yep, and you can see that guy right there. That right there is uh, very satisfying so anybody who's ever done this before know that that's like the most satisfying thing it's a freaking junkyard probably one of my most frustrating times at the junkyard right blake so blake was mad earlier now i'm mad now so didn't have a tool to remove the fan clutch this thing was wrecked in the front so we could barely even get the radiator out of it and there was no room to really do anything so now you can see this situation that we have where we're basically prying on it like tilting it to get it out of here so we got the front out you know the back is kind of stuck the intake manifold stuck over there and i feel like a goof because i'm just but these radiator supports they're not removable and you can see how far pushed back it is so normally you might be able to get it out probably if you remove the fan clutch but yeah here we are we're just happy transmission is right in the freaking way this thing's right in the way Crank pulley now is underneath here. So we thought we were doing good and then crank pulley is now in the way, so. Doing great. Is that it, Blake? Is she out? Give her some pulls. So this Explorer is pretty much off the jacks a couple, couple inches so we're doing great 
Don't do what we do. Uh, it's close. All right, guys, you'll never believe what, uh, got it out. I'd, I don't know how, but uh, it freaking made it out. Uh, we definitely chewed some wires coming out of the back, but I don't think that really matters because this goes to the auto trans. So it's out. Man, that was frustrating. I was probably the most mad I've ever been. At the junkyard. And it was like, it's my fault too. Cause like wrecked in the front, didn't bring a sawzall, but she's out. We got like 30 minutes left. We ain't getting the tranny today, so. All right, so it's out, it's on this thing. Hope it doesn't fall off, but uh, yeah, ready to go. See how much they dink us on all the accessories and parts and ECUs and stuff like that. So we'll see how it's doing. Alright, so we got this thing all loaded up, ready to go. It's more expensive than I thought. Engine, no, core engine, 75 bucks, so a total of 363 bucks, but we'll get 75 bucks back for bringing it back. So it'll be about two something, a little under 300 for the engine, which I guess isn't too bad because they charge us for the ECU and uh, the starter and the alternator. The starter, alternator, and like the power steering, a lot of little stuff, but not bad. Man, that was, uh, that was silly. I don't know if I want to do that again. I hope, uh, basically I need to go back tomorrow for the transmission, the five speed manual out of that F-150. And uh, hopefully that goes a lot smoother than it did today. I'm bringing those mountain wrenches to try to get the bell housing bolts and some other stuff. But man, that, I hope that's not, it wasn't fun. <laughs> well, we're going to have fun again tomorrow, Blake. Ready? Still have to get a transmission. Yep, still got it. And then we got to get clutch, and then we got to figure out if the thing even mounts in there. And we, we got lots of stuff to figure out, Blake. Probably either that or he's he's washing his hands because it's kind of uh, kind of dirty there. But hey, it's uh, it's out. Oh, buddy. Yep. Buddy. That's, that's the auto trans wiring though. Okay. So it's okay. We don't need that where we're going. What trans are you running? The T5. Yeah. Do you have a bell housing for it? Yep. It's right there. It's what bell the, housing is that? The 5.0 out of a Mustang. Okay. What do you think? I, 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 well, I wish you the best, but that thing looks heavy. It does look only 156,000 miles on it. Spring chicken. Day two. This is the F-150. This thing has a 4.2 liter V6, and this is equipped with the manual transmission that should technically bolt straight up to our five liter, and it has a uh, hydraulic clutch, which is good. And the the T5 that we got out of a Mustang, the tail shaft the shifters on the end of it so we would technically have to like drill a hole in our uh our ranger whereas this one it should just line right up and bolt right up so should be doing great i'm gonna go ahead and get uh started yanking this tranny got me a one-piece suit so I could lay on the ground don't get dirt in, in my butt crack you know we'll be good to go so we're uh we're ready to go we're i think we're equipped today see how frustrated we get with these bell housing bolts probably and uh Right, boys so it's actually going pretty smooth we've got some straps some ratchet straps hanging down front and rear Blake's cutting the exhaust off front and rear so now we can kind of slowly ratchet it down but at least it didn't fall on my face and it has a brand new clutch in it and a brand new clutch slave so I don't know if that clutch or that slave or that any of that i don't know if any of that stuff will work for us but it has a brand new clutch and a brand new slave cylinder really yeah well look it has brand new shocks in the front too literally like brand new and then i don't know what happened maybe they got in a wreck or whatever but they sent this thing to the maybe the tranny's bad and then they're they just got done fixing it and then they're like oh the tranny still sucks so let's send it back to the junkyard <laughs> is so i would have kept the drive shaft but the drive shaft they're messing with the forklift they're just all beat up this should bolt up to our five liter so look at all that new stuff though so, literally the clutch is brand new maybe should i grab that all right back at the lovely explorer that we were messing with yesterday and uh looking at the, the rear differential it's one of the ways you can tell what axle is actually in here looking at this door code right here so if you go right there this is a axle d4 
Anything I think with a D in it means that it's LSD. And then if you look actually on the tag, on the axle, which this one's kind of a little misleading because this one says 388. So it's supposed to have an L in it, but this one doesn't actually have an L unless it's over on this side. So it's supposed to be 3L73, uh, um, but this one on the door, it shows it's right axle unless it's been replaced. I don't think it really has, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this boy out of here and uh, we're gonna have ourselves a four day date for a thing because it's gonna, gonna be able to hold at least like 300 torque, right? That's at least what, but the seven, seven five ain't no good. So we're gonna trust the, the door thing on here. We're gonna get off that drive shaft real quick and then uh, try to figure out if this is gonna be the right one. All right guys, so we got rear axle, 89 bucks, core for the axle, 20 bucks, transmission, 99, core for the tranny, 20 bucks, tail light assembly, 13 bucks. And that th 13 bucks is for Sean, so we gotta tack that on his bill. So a total, of 278 and uh, yeah loaded down and we're uh, headed back headed back I don't think we're gonna do any work on it today but we got pretty much everything that we needed so our guys made it back to the shop and got the transmission unloaded and we bolted it up to the five liter that we yanked out of that Explorer yesterday it's looking great the bolt holes and everything line up so that's pretty much exactly what we wanted like you said this came out of that 4.2 liter v6 rear wheel drive f-150 and we have the little flange yoke right here uh, that goes inside the transmission. And then we also got the one off of the differential as well. And uh, so we have the one off of the 8.8. We have that. We have some bolts. We have the ECU. Uh, these are the engine mount plates. There's my camera. Uh, what else? This is all the two 2.5 liter stuff. Like, look at that. Almost bolted together. Interesting thing is the bolts were like 13 mil on the V6. And on here, there were 16 mil head. So need to drill the bolt holes a little bit bigger, but that's no big deal. I was, I'm just excited that it's gonna bolt up and just be like, cool. And then we'll, we'll plug this in, we'll plug that in, we'll turn the key, it's gonna fire right up. We're gonna go uh, out here to the back. So uh, honestly it came out really easy. And one of the interesting things is, is the actual shock, like the hangers are on the bottom of it already. So I don't think we'll have to, uh, I don't think we'll have to do anything else when it comes to mounting that thing in. We should be able to just like stick it underneath and then that'll technically lower it so because on this axle the leaf spring is on top and then on the other axle it was on the bottom so this is technically going to lower it just by doing that and we won't really have to do anything else as long as it bolts up so yeah i don't know uh i don't know how that's all gonna work i hope it works good um the 8.8 had like a weird little shock and then like some traction bar thing that mounted up here to the top so maybe we'll have to do something with that and then i think we actually have to mount shocks on it too but on the the mounts for the leaf springs uh, there's a shock mount on there too so maybe we'll be able to use that i honestly haven't done a whole lot of research on how to do that whole setup but yeah need to get oil filter relocation kit clean up this engine reseal it make sure it doesn't leak and then see if we have enough budget left for a turbo on this thing so i did buy this mustang t5 as you can see where the like the tail shaft housing and everything is they're a little bit different this one's more towards the rear they honestly might be the same distance no this one's a lot closer so if I would have put that T5 in here, I would have have to had to cut the shifter. Whereas right now, this is literally, this is almost the best solution. And the crazy thing is, is that it was at the same junkyard, pretty much just ready to go. So it was 97 Explorer with no anti-theft, no anti-theft, manual transmission, manual transmission. I guarantee we could probably just swap the yokes on the drive shaft and the drive shafts will probably bolt up and be the same length because that's pretty much uh, how this thing's gonna be. So we got a Lego Ranger, Blake. You wanna go? All right, guys, so that was mine and Blake and I's portion of this little Ranger build, pulling an engine. Stay tuned tomorrow if you want to see a real truck get built. Oh, yep, go ahead. You like that? A real truck? A real truck. Yeah, I guess. All a right. real truck. Uh, if you guys like these videos, thumbs up, subscribe for more, and we'll see you guys. In, well, I guess you guys will see Sean and uh, Chris in tomorrow's video, them building their Ranger. Uh, a real or truck. Yeah, if, if you'd consider it that. We'll but see. We'll, we'll see.